All right, Jason. So explain to me what is going on with Phil Mickelson, 51 years old. Um, He made some comments about this. I guess the Saudis are forming a competitive league or tour to the PGA here in America. They want to get some cash in on some of the big dough that these golfers can make. That's my understanding of it. But he stepped in it. How so? Well, uh, his comments to Alan Shipnick with Sports Illustrator, or who formerly was Sports Illustrator, is writing a book about Phil. And Phil and he were having a conversation over the phone. And Phil talked with Shipnick about, like, hey, I know the Saudi Arabian government is brutal and that I'm crawling into bed with some scary mofos, his 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 own words. Uh, and he's very aware of their human rights abuses and how they they murder gay people or, uh, you know, uh, sentence gay Washington people to death. Washington Post like reporter that. Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah, all, all, he's aware of all of that. And so to me, Phil represents uh, the elite hypocrisy that drives me crazy. The The PGA Tour has made him rich beyond his wildest dreams. He's probably made $100 million playing golf. He's probably made another two to $400 million in endorsements wow. from his golf career. And he's a very wealthy guy who loves to gamble and has lost a lot of money gambling. And so he wants more and more and more from the PGA Tour. You know, he's not satisfied. And maybe the PGA Tour is heavy-handed. But turning to the Saudis is no different, in my view, than I'm looking at Nike, the NBA, and NBA players turn to China. It's never enough. There's the disease of more, 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 more. I got to get wealthier. wealthier. They got 1.4 billion people over in China. I could care less what they do to Uyghurs. I could care care less they're a communist country. I could care less that they smear the United States is irredeemably racist when China is a thousand times more racist and brutal than America. So these athletes, these elites, these Americans who get rich off of our system, eventually wind up in their pursuit of cash, getting in bed with foreign governments Mm. and and serving them. And so I I wrote a piece and talked on my show. Phil Mickelson is no different than LeBron James. He sold us out. He has a problem with the organization, the American organization. It helped make him rich. He's going to the Saudis to get leverage over them and, and trying to start a rival league and it, it's disgusting. And and this is what I think it's a prime example of just how our elites, regardless of color and regardless of politics, I, Phil Mickelson, I would imagine based off interviews I've read and what he insinuate, he's a conservative. But for money, he will sell out the PGA Tour and his peers on the PGA Tour who are very upset with him, uh, who don't think he's gone about this in the right way. Uh, he, he will sell us out. And th- that's and so w- when people think of Trump and the America first thing and people think of like, hey, this globalism thing, th- this is a problem that that we don't get to hold on to our traditional American values that created all this freedom and opportunity that we all enjoy here in America. <clears throat> this globalism thing is taking our uniqueness away and imposing China's values on us and all these foreign countries. And so we got to all be a part of this global society. We can't be uniquely American anymore. Mm. And so when you look at our movies and how they bend over backwards for China and change things up so they can reach the 1.4 million people or 1.4 billion people over in China, and, and and why the messaging in much of our television and movies is so anti-American. It is. It's oh, no, we did a great segment not long ago on how the Chinese have totally bought Hollywood. Everything you're being fed from Hollywood is be- you're being fed it by uh, the Chinese Communist Party. And they're trying to manip- manipulate the way you think. They'll decide what's entertaining. They're, they have pro-China messages and, and anti-American messages and our Hollywood greedy uh, elite just go along with it because they want the dough. And to your point, I mean, Phil 
is complaining to this reporter one word about the alleged off the record nature of the conversation. You're dealing with a guy who's writing a book about you and you want to have an off the record conversation. You better make damn sure the reporter knows this particular conversation is off the record. And anybody in Phil's position, if they were smart, would have taken out their little iPhone, which we all know has a recorder on it and said, I'm going to record this. This part is off the record so that you have a record of the fact that you said it's off the record and you don't find yourself in this position. And by the way, the reporter who um, undoubtedly reported the uh, recorded the conversation should be releasing the beginning of it so that we can see whether Phil said anything to that effect, you know, Uh, because if it's off the record, it's not fair game and we shouldn't be having this discussion. Anyway, he here's what Phil said. He said the PGA is exploitive and he's talking about how I know I know the Saudis are bad in his word. They're scary. M efforts again. I'm trying not to swear. It's Lent um, to get involved with. We know they killed Khashoggi. We, they have a horrible record on hu- human rights. They execute people over there for being gay. Knowing all of this, why would I even consider it? Because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to reshape how the PGA Tour operates. They've been able to get by with manipulative, coercive, strong arm tactics because we, the players, had no recourse. As nice a guy as PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan comes across as, unless you have leverage, he won't do what's right. And the Saudi money has finally given us that leverage because they're offering these eye-popping salaries. The Saudis are, not surprisingly, they're going to go way above and beyond. That's They have to. Other, no, otherwise, nobody would do business with them. He says, I'm not sure I even want the Saudi League to succeed, but just the idea of it is allowing us to get things done with the PGA Tour. And... Um, Apparently, the PGA's Monaghan has warned the players, if you jump ship, you could be banned for life from the PGA Tour. He's talking about leverage. That's what Phil Mickelson is talking about, leverage. However, you raise the issue of the gambling. I also did not know this, but they say he has, or at least had, massive gambling losses that are also going to be detailed in this book. Um, Notwithstanding the fact that he earned almost $100 in PGA Tour earnings, second only to that of Tiger Woods, he had to sell, he sold, his Gulfstream jet in 2019, someone had said, quote, he loved that plane so much it was like his fourth child. And it does raise the question about whether this is not really about improving leverage, but covering gambling losses that resulted in the loss of his airborne fourth child <laughs> with very lucrative Saudi deals. Megan, this entire conversation ties together, because if you listen to what Phil Mickelson said in his expert, this is a once in a life opportunity to reshape and and to reshape things and to seize more power. And so that's the same mindset that the Democrats used in terms of whew, Antifa and Black Lives Matter. We're going to look the other way as you terrorize these cities, because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to seize power and to reshape America. And and it's the same mentality if I'm Nike. Some of the things that Phil was saying there in terms of, oh, we don't have leverage and it's hard to work with the restrictions here uh, in America and American workers cost so much. And so this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to take our manufacturing over to Asia and where th- their workers aren't unionized, don't have rights. Some of them are slaves. Some of them are children. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to reshape and re-energize and to make Nike more and more powerful and richer. You know, I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to get in bed with China. I really don't want to get in bed with Saudi Arabia. I, I-, I really don't want to get in bed with Black Lives Matter and Antifa, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm. Screw America. And and so that's what I just sit here and just wonder how John F. Kennedy, JFK uh, asked, you know, about what you can do for your country. And we've completely lost that spirit. No, no one thinks about that. We're all so fat, happy and greedy that all we can do is think about how we can enrich ourselves and and screw America. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.